Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now as some of you may know I'm making a few upgrades to my personal PC that I use for editing, rendering and uploading videos here on YouTube. Now as someone who likes to try and save as much money as possible and share those experiences with you guys, it was important that despite upgrading I didn't spend too much money. Luckily I don't have too much to spend anyway though so that helped a lot. Having upgraded from a G3258 to an i5-4460, which I found for just £90 a few weeks ago, about $110, the need to find a replacement for the 750Ti has been long overdue. Normally I wouldn't be upgrading, but with video editing being the most taxing process on my hardware, I thought it was for the best. So here it is, the 3GB GTX 1060 Zotac Mini GPU. This is the absolute cheapest 1060 available at just £180 here in the UK or around $190 in the US. Now I don't consider this to be a cheap card by a long shot. An ideal budget option would have been the 1050 for 119 or even something a bit older but more powerful. So why did I buy this? Aside from the obvious YouTube side of things of course. And more importantly, why did I get the 3GB version when a 6GB version costs just £50 more where I live? Firstly, let's get into that. The 3GB and 6GB versions are both clocked at 1506MHz, with the 6GB card having 8 more texture mapping units and 128 more shader processing units, 1280 compared to 1156. This all equates to a performance difference of around 8% in the 6GB version's favour. I don't consider the extra worth the money. £50 is quite a lot to me and going over that 200 price point looks far more expensive on paper. Some of you may be saying, well, with just 3GB of VRAM, you'll be limiting yourself in terms of higher texture settings and games are already using more than that. Now whilst I agree to some extent I've tested both cards in the past at 1080p and found that at this resolution that barrier isn't really broken. So what about the RX 470 which was also an option? I came so very close to buying this on sale a few weeks back but at the time my power supply was too weak and I couldn't afford to upgrade both. I'm also quite power consumption conscious and the 1060 uses just 90 watts of power on average under load at 1080p compared to the 140 watts of the RX 470. This specific card also only requires a 400 watt PSU and one 6 pin connector, not to mention that it's a very small card as well, no bigger than my old Palette 750 Ti which is an important factor considering that my case really isn't that big. So now it's time to see what this thing can do when it comes to gaming and the main reason why I bought it. So let's start with Crisis 3 at very high settings. As you can see our new 1060 is making very light work of this title even at these settings averaging around 51 FPS throughout our half hour gameplay period. There is no lag to speak of and the card seems to be staying quiet too. When we take a look at the comparative results, the 470 still scored a respectable 45 frames per second, so the difference, whilst negligible, was there. Witcher 3 next, and we're seeing a buttery smooth 67 frames per second with the Ultra preset, but Hairworks and AA is off. Again, very impressive for this card I feel, and it seems to be sticking close to this mark almost all of the time. Again, the 470 is just a few frames behind at 60, and still makes for an excellent experience. This time, we ran the actual in-game benchmark of The Division to switch things up a bit, and we found that the 1060 ran at 58 frames on average with the Ultra preset and anti-aliasing off. When we look at our 470 results on screen, we see that this was even closer, with about one frame difference. But it was too close to call, to be honest. What's one frame between friends? So there we have it. I know that in the future, this 1060 may start to see limitations, but all cards eventually will. At this resolution, this GPU should set me up for years to come, and I certainly don't plan on gaming at 4K. We are a budget orientated channel after all, and despite splashing out a little more on my personal build, 
It killed me a little bit inside to do so. I think £180 for a few years of happiness is a great price to pay and I could and will easily recommend this card to anyone. The 470 is great too, but it just wasn't right for me. Thank you for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you are happy with my decision to upgrade to the 1060. I feel that it is a pretty decent card for the price and hopefully it's going to speed up all my editing and stuff like that as well. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you didn't enjoy it all that much. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.